Okay, I'm back again. I'm going to continue playing through the campaign deck, The Ruin of Thandar for Hero Realms. This is the first time I've played through this campaign. This will be my second game of Hero Realms ever, not just the campaign deck playthrough, but of Hero Realms. A couple of things from the last one. We got an award of an elixir, so I was going to shuffle these up and take this reward. And let's take this one. Uh, we can trash it. The next action you acquire this turn costs one gold less. So we've got an elixir there. I'm a little more zoomed in this time than I was last time. So it might be kind of tight on the play area, but I wanted to try to see if I could get a little bit better view of the cards on the table. So we'll see how this goes for this episode. We also get an award, I think we get an award of a class item. Rewards are the five elixirs. Each player finds a clash treasure. Yep. So these are the four wizard treasures. So we will shuffle these up. Okay. Take that one, and then we'll put the rest of those off to the side. What did we get? Serpentine Staff replaces a gold, so it's one gold. Deal two damage to each minion in target area. Just throw that over there. So that's the Serpentine Staff. So we go to our deck, and it's going to replace a gold. So let's take a gold out and put that into the deck and shuffle the deck up. So we've got that ready off over here for when we start. All right, so we're supposed to go to chapter three, Encounter to the Chase. As you burst through the front door of the inn, you see some of the mysterious cloaked figures dragging a young man through the street. The man struggles, but a stiff blow to the head ends his resistance. You suspect the magically induced bar fight was just a diversion to cover the abduction of this patron. You start to give chase, but at the first intersection the cloaked figures split up and flee down different streets. The first group is led by a human male, the second seems to be following a large imp. You can't see which group has the young man. If you want to follow the humans group, go to chapter 4. If you want to follow the imps group, go to chapter 5. Let's follow... What seems more fun? It's a fantasy game. Let's follow the imp. We'll go to chapter five. Chapter five, fight the vexing imp. Set up for encounter two with vexing imp as master. Place the oversized vexing imp card in the master's seat at the table. On the side that has the one, set up the master's deck using the encounter cards marked with the two. The master starts with 60 health. Story, you chase the imp and its followers to a narrow alley. Once you're within shouting distance, you call out, Demon, stand and fight. We don't fear you, necro scum. The demon turns toward you, its wings fluttering. Its head bobs up and down, and you hear a choking sound. You realize the demon is laughing. The necros are fools. They don't understand our true purpose. Not like our new masters. Who are your masters, you ask? The imp's mouth opens wide. Stop them, he tells his followers. Slay them. Special rule. Whenever an imp minion is defeated, don't put it into the master's discard pile. Instead, put it into a special out-of-play pile. Play begins with the player who has the master seat to the right. When the encounter ends, go to chapter 6. So, let's see. We need to get the vexing imp out of here. Um, vexing Imp, about right there, get that out of the way, and I've already got the cards with the two on them right here, so we need to shuffle that, so actually we need to get, we need to pull one card from, these are the cards with the S on them, 
We get to pull one card from this deck. How about that one? Put the rest of those over there. Let's throw it in the middle. We'll bring him back in a second. Let's just get some room to make our piles. Five piles. Oops. And then one mastery card in each pile. I didn't even look and see what order those mastery cards were in. I didn't shuffle them, but I think it'll be okay. All right. So what does he have on his card here? Blue is discard a champion from your hand. Green, which is his favorite on his level one side. I can pop it over here so you can read it while I'm shuffling. Maybe you can read it. The text on these cards is kind of small, even in person. Discard two cards is the green. Discard an action is the red. And the gold is put a random imp from out of play into play. Oh, that's why there's a special out of play area. So if I defeat them, they go out of play and then we'll come back in through that mechanic there, I guess, or mechanism, whatever it's called. Okay, so let's, I shuffled this ahead of time, but just so that we have it on the record, that it's randomized, do that, shuffle it, and we get one, two, three, four, and five. So we've got three green cards, one red and one white. One, two, three, four actions, which is good for us as a wizard, one champion, he was a guard seven, whoa, but he cost seven, so kind of expensive. One, two, three, four, five. Now, what did we get? We got our staff and some gold. So we've got four gold here and an action would cost one less, so we got a little bit of money to spend. All right, so we start off with the master's turn. Let's see what he gets right away an imp. Screen, he's going to make me discard two cards. Well, that's not very nice of him to start off the game. Um, hmm. Discard two cards. It's going to require three damage to get rid of him, so I might as well discard Ignite because two is not going to do anything. Um, hmm. Maybe I will, I'll keep spell components and toss gold. Oops. Make a discard pile here. All right, so uh, now he's over here attacking us, but he doesn't have anything to add to the, um, to the combat pool for the master. But he does have an action that makes me discard a card that costs um, one or more gold. None of my cards cost gold, so that's not actually gonna do anything to me. So into the master's turn, well, ready, that guy. Oh, wait, I could have killed him with this. I didn't 
remember that this actually does damage to each minion in a target area also. Um, get rid of two gold so I can buy an action that costs three. Yeah, all right, so this will be my hand. We'll use Ignite and the ability from Serpentine Staff, which says deal two damage to each minion in target area, which will be the area in front of me. So this two damage, adding two to the combat pool, this Imp will absorb three of it. Oh, I forgot to put his starting health out. 60, but he's going to take one from my combat pool and be at 59. And I've got a gold and a gold, and actions will cost me one less. And this guy's going to be out of play. Not normal discard pile, so out of, actually out of play. I'm going to put it off screen so that's so that out of play. Um... Elven Curse does six damage. And if I get another green card, it'll be another three. And there's mostly green up here. It costs three, but I can spend for an action that costs three. And we'll refill the market. Man at Arms. Okay. This is one, two, three, four, five. So all the cards become my hand. And we'll do the master's turn. Blue, uh, discard a champion from my hand, and that's his first mastery. And I should have my cat familiar. Yep. But he's really putting pressure on my hand. Okay, so that's the end of his turn. No combat pool for him. Um. Fire Staff, if I have two or more actions in play, draw a card. I do not. I only have Ignite is one action, so I can't draw a card. Three damage will do to him. Takes him to 56. Two gold. Nothing up there costs two except a Fire Gem, which we'll take. All right. Mastery card came out kind of quick. Two, three, four, five. What do we get in our hand? Let's peek real quick. Gold. Spell components. Gold, gold, and fire staff. So a lot of buying power and only one damage card. So let's do the master's turn. It's another green. Discard two cards. And this is an elite character. Players, champions, enter, play, expended is what it says. Yeah, so he's going to stay over here, kind of in the master's area. How do I want to do this? Uh, yeah, but I still need to get through him first. can make this the master's area, and then I'll put the ones that are attacking me over here. Okay, um, so six. Okay, this guy's gonna be rough to get through. Okay, the master's turn. He will use his minions, add three to the combat pool, takes me down to 47. I could use my fireball. But that's not going to do me very much good because I've only got one damage here and I need I would need two more added on to my fireball in order to get rid of this guy and hit the master. Uh, end of his turn, he goes back up. 
So fire staff is doing nothing for us. Just going to discard it. I've got four gold and I can get one discount on an action. Um, let's see. I could also draw a card. I can use the elixir to get a discount of two on actions. What do we got out here for actions? And I bought a green card, right? Yes, I did. Uh, we've got a cost three action here that does five damage. This nature's bounty card just gets us four more gold, which could be good to get like this um, guard seven expensive guy here. This necros card is an eight attack that costs six. One, two, three, four, and I could get a discount of two if I burn my elixir. Yeah. Elixir's being burned, life drain's being purchased. It's an eight attack. And I could sacrifice a card in my hand discard pile if I wanted to start culling some cards out of my deck. Okay, what did we get for the market? A recruit, that's gold and healing. Two, three, four, five. What do we get in our hand? Got the Elven Curse, which we can use to take care of this guy, as long as we get to keep it. We got our Cat Familiar, Ignite, Fire Gem, and Gold. Okay, let's see what his turn is. Uh, Ruinous Vampire. It's gold, so gold is put a random imp from out of play into play. Great. So both of these guys are coming in here. Uh, he's going to use this guy to add three to his combat pool. This guy's going to add four to his combat pool. And he's going to heal him for four, taking him back to 60. And doing this is going to make me discard a card that costs one or more. I'll discard the Fire Gem. And he's going to hit me for seven. He's got seven in his combat pool. So that takes me down to 40. Okay, now... Now I think I have to get through these guys before I can do anything with this guy, as I believe how this works. Okay, my Cat Familiar is going to come into play expended because of the ability on this guy. I've got one gold that's doing nothing for me because I can't buy anything with one. I'm going to use my fireball, sacrifice my fireball, do four damage in this area here, which gets rid of all of those, and I'll put that imp out of play again. Now I've got, I've got six and two, which is eight into the combat pool. Target opponent discards a card, and in this mode, oh, you guys can't see that damage. Uh, you get to look at the top card here. It's another Ruinous Vampire. Um, you can elect to either keep it on top or put it on the bot or discard it. I don't want him to get to his masteries quick, so I'm going to leave that there. Okay, so these this 8 damage, 6 is going to go here, and then 2 over here taking him to 58. Did not get to buy anything that turn. This already feels 
a little ramped up in difficulty from the first scenario. Of course, I'm like only four turns in. One, two, three more cards. What did we get in our hand? Oh, our cat familiar would be ready to party. We got Ignite, the Serpentine Staff, Life Drain. It's good. Spell components and gold. Okay. So we know what his is going to be. Oh, I should have looked at what the gem on it was too. It's red, discard an action. Discard an action. We are not discarding life drain. So we will discard ignite. All right, and then he's gonna heal him for four. And he's gonna hit me for four. Okay, so let's just take care of our damage here first. It's eight to the combat pool. This guy would have readied. So four would go there, and then we'll put four over here. That's done. Um, actually, wait. Keep forgetting about this. When this guy was still here, if I play my Serpentine Staff, it can deal two damage to each minion in the target area. So two damage in this area leaves this guy with two. Then I add eight to my combat pool. So he absorbs two more, and then uh, two more over to, over here. So that takes him to fifty six. So I've got three gold and I can get an action for one discount. We've got recruits here. Close ranks is an action. Have I bought another white card yet? I don't think so. Maybe I should go into these white cards and get this healing. If I get this recruit, oh, and I've also got the cat familiar that I haven't used yet. So I could have four gold, essentially five gold if I buy actions. So yeah, I'm gonna use my cat familiar to get a gold and this gold here to buy recruit. That's a $2 cost action. Seven cost champion that does three damage. You may sacrifice a card in your hand or discard pile. If you do, gain an additional three. So I've got two gold left and a discount on an action. I'm gonna buy close ranks. Normally it would cost three, but it'll cost me two. Okay, end of my turn. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see what we got. Gold, Elven Curse, another gold, gold, and Ignite. Okay. Master turn is a mastery. His favorite, so because it's white, we have to go to his favorite. On this side is discard two cards, of course. Uh, I want to hit him for a bunch of damage, so I'm going to discard, I think, because I could get, I could have four gold. Um, there's a two cost champion, a three cost champion with guard. Yeah, I'll get rid of two gold. So, we will start with, I kind of like this champion, and he costs two, so I think I'll spend this gold and use the cat familiar gold to pick up the champion, and that might help trigger my other green card, the ally action on the green card there. 
I like this action too. It costs two for three gold in the future. Um, I did not have another green card in play, so I don't get the bonus on this one. But we've got six to the combat pool and two to the combat pool. So we've got eight coming at him. So down to 48. 48 to 36. One, two. I don't know where we are in the possibility of getting the third mastery card. One, two, three, four, five cards. Six cards have been played. So this card, actually, this next card could be the third mastery card because we're through the first two sets of six and in, or six, the first two sets of three and into the next set of three already. So he could be flipping over here pretty soon. One, two, three. See what we got in our hand. Fire staff, fire gem, elven curse again. Oh, good. So we'll get the extra damage because we have another green card here. We've got some healing, and if we can get this champion into play, we'll get a little bit more healing. This is a good hand. Don't make us discard stuff this time. Don't make us discard, even though all of his stuff is basically discard or bring another imp into play and which is exactly what i drew so gold is going to bring the imp in from out of play in, back in and my champions are going to enter play expended oh he should be back up right okay so he's going to add three to the combat pool and he's going to make me discard a card that costs one or more and that's going to be the fire gem Okay, what does the top part of this say? When you play a Necros card, stun this minion, and I don't have any Necros cards, which is unfortunate. Because what I believe that means, well, I'll show that in just a second. So I did his three to the combat pool, 33, right? Yep, okay, so these guys ready. So what I believe this power means is if I played a Necros card, he would actually expend and go on his side like this. And I don't think he would actually be readied again for the for the Master's next turn, because they're ready at the end of the turn. Plus, since he is sideways like this, I can go past him and do stuff over here. I'd still have to fight this guy. But I believe that's what it means. So it's good to have Necros cards. Oh, no, wait, Stunning. Yeah, this game's stun is you just get rid of it. Yeah, it'd be gone. It'd just be completely gone. Yeah, okay. That's even better. He's just completely gone. All right, so in my hand, I've got Fire Staff, Elven Curse. Wolf Shaman is a champion, which is going to come into play expended because of this guy. And this action. My Fire Staff is if I have two actions in play, I get to draw a card. Okay, this is good. This is good. So, is there anything up there that I want for cheap? Because I've got two gold. Oh, actually I have three gold because I have another um, white card in play, which means this ally ability triggers. So I've got three possibly one more from the cat familiar three gold or four it might actually buy this man at arms that costs three Rampage, it's another green card, costs six, does six damage. You may draw up to two cards, then discard that many cards. 
All right, so I've spent the gold from this card, but there's healing on here, and it's plus one for each champion I have in play. I have two champions in play. So that's going to heal me for five. It takes me to 38. Yeah, I like Recruit. I had that in the last game, too. Now let's look at doing some damage. Let's add to our combat pool here. So we've got one plus six plus three because we had another we have another wild card in play, a green card. So this is nine plus one is ten. Uh, let's use the cat familiar for eleven. Close ranks is 15, so it'll, it'll add 5, so it takes it to 15. Um, plus 2 for each champion you have in play, so that's another 4, so that's 19 damage. And look at this, we have another white card in play, so that's uh, 6 more healing. So that's going to take us to 44. And I was at 19, right? 1... 5, 10, 16, 19, 20. Was I off by 1? Let's count it again. 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 3 is 10, plus 5 is 15. Uh, plus 2 for each champion you have in play makes it 19, plus 1 from the cat is 20. Yeah. So, of the 20, the imp will take 3. So that's 17. Uh, minus 6 is 11. So he goes down to 37. All right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's draw a card. It's mastery. The gold brings an imp from out of play into play. And he will flip. So he's going to be drawing still only one card. That's nice. But his actions get a little more crazy. So he's still only drawing one card on, the, on side two here. Blue is discard two champions from your hand. Green is discard three cards. Red is discard two actions. And gold is put two random ips from out of play into play. But we need to shuffle his deck. So let's, whoopsie. Spread these mastery cards around. Let's move them out of the way, do a quick pile shuffle. I don't know if three piles is good or not. Okay, bring him back, get his deck there. So now his guy is going to make me discard a card that costs one or more. Oh, and bummer. I've only got one that actually costs something, which is my big hitter life drain. I got to ready my guys here. That is unfortunate. And he's got 37 health. All right, so we've got Serpentine Staff. Uh, deal two damage to each minion in target area. We'll target this area here. So that guy's got one left. Let's add... let's see. We've got three gold total. What's out there to buy? Influence is just objectively better than Fire Gem because it gets you one more gold for the same cost. I could get four gold to buy this Nature's Bounty, which just gets me more gold. Um, hmm. I've got three gold to spend. Nothing out there costs three. This stuff is all expensive. 
Since we've got so much expensive stuff out here, let's add one from the cat to get us a total of four gold and buy this nature's bounty card, which is going to get us four gold in the future. What do we get here? Firebomb costs eight. Everything out there is super expensive now. Okay, we'll use our wolf shaman to add two to the combat pool, plus one for every other green card in play. We don't have any more green cards in play. So we're adding two from here. Two from here makes four. We've already done two damage to him. One more damage to him leaves three. So we had a hiccup in the internet. I don't know if this is actually still streaming. I hope it is. Let's see how it comes out uh, once I finish. See what I got in my hand. Lots of buying power this time. Not a whole lot of damage. So we've got four gold, actions cost one less, one ignite. We could end up with five gold. That would leave us enough to get rampage because rampage costs six and it's an action. And we've got spell components in our hand. This would be the turn to get um, for this imp because I don't have anything that costs any money. Okay, let's go. Let's see what the master's card is going to be here. It's a white mastery. Uh, now his favorite is gold, which is to put two random imps from out of play into play, but there is only one over there. So he's in play, he'll use him. He's gonna force me to discard a card that costs one or more. I don't have one that costs one or more, so he does nothing. Okay, so we'll do what I said there. We'll do one, two, three, Four, we'll spin the cat to make it five. We get a discount on actions to buy Rampage. The Rot is a Necros action, costs three, does four damage. If I have another Necros card, does three damage. And if I use my Wolf Shaman and my Ignite, that gets me a total of four into my combat pool. Takes care of the imp, plus one damage goes through to the master. One, two, three, four, five. Fire staff, ignite, close ranks. Oh. Need another white card in play to get this healing. See what he's going to make us do. Another imp, and it's red. Discard two actions. Ignite is an action. Um, hmm. Let me ready these guys. Nature's bounty. Give me four gold. I would have four, five, six with no discounts. Maybe I discard nature's bounty. Hmm. I don't know if that was right. Um, he's also going to make me discard a card that costs one or more. Wow. He's going to make me end up with nothing. Because when he attacks, I have to lose close ranks. Hmm. Let's spin this gold and the gold from my cat familiar and a health to draw a card. 
Is that worth it? No, it's not. Because that's not going to leave me barely with anything. I'll spin that gold and the gold from the cat familiar to get influence. It costs two. Street Thug as a champion, as a blue champion. And I'll use the two from the combat pool here and the one from the combat pool here to do the three damage required to take this guy out. Another imp going out of play. It's the end of my turn. Two, three, four, five. What did we get? Fire Gem, Elven Curse, Recruit, Man at Arms Champion, and Life Drain. So we've got a lot of actions, one champion, and a Fire Gem. Another Imp. Blue says discard two champions from your hand. Well, I've only got one champion. And then this Imp doing his action is going to make me discard a card that costs one or more gold. We will discard Fire Gem. Okay. Um, we do not have another white card in play. So recruit first on the healing is going to give us three plus one for each champion. We've got two champions in play, so it's going to give us five. Back up to 49. Then uh, two gold. Is there anything out here that I want? I think I need to start just doing damage. So I think I'll just spin the two gold on a fire gem. I can always sacrifice that for three damage. These life, this wording on this life drain card I wonder how this works, because it says you may sacrifice a card in your hand or discard pile. Does that mean you it, does that mean you can use this sacrifice ability to get this damage now? I wonder. If you know, can you leave a comment down below if that's how that works? I'm kind of curious. Or is it just to get just to cull cards out of your deck? Alright, so we're looking at combat pool cards here, right? I finished with that. We are going to add two to the combat pool here, plus one for other green cards you have in place. So we're currently at three. Take it to four with the cat familiar. Uh, take it to 10 with the top of this, plus three more is 13 because I have another green card in play. So we're at 13 plus eight here makes it 21. So three on this imp takes it down to 18. So 33 minus 18 is gonna take him to 15. And then I've got target opponent, target opponent discards a card. So we look here. Uh, this is that elite guy, yeah. I'm gonna have him discard that. And then I can sacrifice a card with this card. I'm gonna get a just a basic gold card out of my deck. Basic gold card gone. I believe that is everything. One card. Real quick pile shuffle for some more randomization. Okay, we've 
we've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got a bunch of health, 49 to 15. Serpentine staff, ignite, gold, spell components, and gold. Not doing a whole lot of damage on this turn. Maybe we'll draw some cards, or draw a card with our ability here. All right, what do we got coming out? Twisting Bolt. Uh, so it's going to do his favorite. Put two random imps. Uh, these are all the same. Oh man, so many imps to deal with. This damage deals 10 damage to you. A nearby player may choose to suffer this damage instead. 49 to 39. Um, I'm going to spend two gold. Well, actually, first, these guys would activate to make me discard the cards that cost more than one. I don't have any cards that cost more than one, so they're actually doing nothing to me. I'm going to spend two gold and a health and use my channel ability to draw a card. Okay. So that gold is spent. And we've got four that I can add to my combat pool here. So this four plus these two makes the six that I need to get rid of both of those guys. So now I can have three gold with one discount. For if I get an action, um, I'm just going to buy this rot. We've got deception as an action that costs five. You get two gold and you get to draw a card. Come on, big attacks. One, two, three, four, five. Got Rampage for six, Close Ranks for five, Life Drain for eight, Fire Staff. Okay, now let's see what he's going to make us do here. Red Mastery is draw, discard two actions. Oh, no. We can discard Influence. That's an action. And I guess we discard Close Ranks. Because that's five, this is six and eight. He's got 15. We've got our cat familiar. We've got enough to destroy him, so we're good. We'll discard those. Rampage is six to our combat pool. Life drain is eight, making it 14. Fire staff, let's just draw for the fun of it because we can, because we have two or more actions. Okay, we got a random gold. Uh, so we're at 14. This makes it 15. Let's spin the gold off of this cat and this gold here and a health to draw another card because I want to do lots of damage. We'll blow this up for three more. 14, 15, 18, uh, 19, 20, plus one because I have a green card. 21 more damage, boom, he is gone. And we ended up with 37. Okay, so let's go to the book. Chapter six, end of the chase. If the master escapes or if all players are defeated, you lose the encounter. That did not happen. If you reduce the master's health to zero, you win the encounter. Read the text below and collect your rewards. Your enemies lie defeated, but the kidnapped young man is not with this group. You search the fallen followers for clues, but find nothing save a few items that may prove useful. Then you hear a groan and realize one of your enemies is still conscious, barely. You question him and learn three things. First, his group was once part of the Necros cult, but splintered off to form their own sect. They call themselves the Ruinous. Second, they were headed to a nearby cobbler's shop, which conceals an entrance to a series of caverns beneath Thandar. These caverns lead to a ceremonial space where the Ruinous gather. Third, in a few hours, they intend to sacrifice the kidnapped young man to summon a demon. You have no time to lose. 
rewards. Each player finds a class treasure. Each player shuffles the remaining treasure cards from their class, draws one card, then adds that treasure to their personal deck. Put the remaining treasure cards back in the box. Each player earns a character point and may spend it to upgrade one of their skills or abilities, or to buy an additional health card. Okay. Um, I can do the uh, treasure card now. Where did I put the treasure cards? Here are the treasure cards. Let's draw this treasure card now. See what we get, and I'll do the character point in between episodes. I want to read that rule again and see what I can get. Uh, let's take the middle one. Silver Skull Amulet is a wizard item. It doesn't replace anything, and it's worth two gold, and I can sacrifice it to draw a card. So I will throw that into my deck. Okay, so that was the second scenario, second encounter. I think there's one more encounter. Does it go up to three? I'm not sure, but I think there's three. I'd really like uh, this game. Uh, if we weren't in quarantine, I'd, I'd want to play the uh, versus against somebody else. There's lots of games, actually, not just this one, that if we weren't in quarantine, I'd like to play versus someone else. Um, but I'm finding this uh, to be a nice, uh, like, quick, easy game. It's fun. There's It's a little bit mathy, a little bit to figure out. I mean, there is luck that comes with any kind of card game, you know, what depends on what cards you draw. What comes out of the deck here but it's fun it's a nice little uh, break uh, i'm playing through jaws of the lion right now and that one's a more thinky there was a hiccup again with the internet in the middle so i hope that this uh, all got saved up to youtube during the stream correctly if you saw any other rules mistakes that i made that i didn't really uh, pick up on I might zoom it out next time because I'm not sure if this was enough play area um, to hold all the cards and I don't even know how much you can really even read or see on the screen but if you're familiar with the cards you probably know what what you're looking at here okay uh, see you in the next episode episode three will go on to the next scenario thanks for watching